Hi, everyone. Hello again. We're reading from our tract on screen. We don't have a hard copy of it. Cost of the counting the cost of discipling, and we're in the subhead, the cost of competence. Mm -hmm. We made the point in the last video, which we'll link at the end. That which was a long time ago. <laughs> six months ago, yeah, we did the last one. <laughs> uh, we made the point that too many people back then, when we wrote this twenty years ago, too many people were getting addicted to online research. Yeah, quick. And it's got a lot worse in those twenty years. Yeah. And we pointed out last time, no, it's best to know where to get the best books. Don't just use algorithms to find the stuff you think you, yeah. you, you can safely use. No, you need to find out where to get the best books. So in the last video, which we link here, you will see some authors that helped us get our bearings. When we left the Watchtower 35 mm -hmm. years ago, we needed books about books, and we found them. And yeah. we showed you a few of those last time. But mm -hmm. but now we we want to talk more specifically about the perils of online research. But so, also the pluses of what's available now. Yes, there are good good things about online research that we've discovered even since we we uh, bought some books. I'll show you the books in a minute that we bought, and now I realized I could have saved myself some money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, some of us love books, and we we won't take on. But some of us, well, we just can't afford it. So. Here, we're going to be staring above above your heads because we're going to be reading this from the, our TV screen. Mm -hmm. So here goes. Another problem with online research, and it is a huge one, whereas it is possible to find Christian classics now in the public domain from commendable evangelical websites, it is not at all recommendable to do Bible research exclusively by this method. Devotional classics, say in, on Genesis or Luke, Yes, but, but where the subject or Bible passage generates questions reg respecting authorship, translation, cultural background, etc., older sources can be misleading, even catastrophically misinformed. So we're, we're addressing the issue of here what's avail available for free online. It tends to be the older books, for mm. sure, in public domain. Yeah. One needs, to, one needs up-to-date modern reference works and commentaries to do even adequate work in Bible research and exposition. And these works will almost never be online unless in expensively downloadable versions. The best works will cost a fair amount to buy and a lot of time to utilize properly. In other words, we must pay for competent sources, at least the new ones. Again, if this idea offends, how seriously do we take the sacred principle the worker is worthy of his wages. In other words, it's cost these authors, these modern authors, years, years, even mm -hmm. decades of their life to put this together. It's only fair they profit from it. Therefore, we must think seriously about our lead question. When doing research in Bible and related areas, are we willing to count the cost of competence? So competence has minimal, minimal requirements on its price tag. Two or three reliable, substantial works on the given subject. You might get away with one excellent source, but there are almost always multiple perspectives on the important issues. A Christian need not espouse more than one position, but he better be respectfully aware of the others if he wants to communicate knowledgeably and sympathetically. Yeah. We wanted to show you an example from our recent research. Uh, yeah. We have a class on Ezekiel for that took us about six months, right? Mm -hmm. from last winter onwards and I had a lot of works on Ezekiel already I had I don't know 15 or 20 already but most of them were older so I thought I better invest in some new new ones here's one of the older ones I had a standard work in the Tyndale series on Ezekiel John Taylor that's a slight work though you'll get the basics from it but I knew I needed more than basics to to write a course on Ezekiel so I ordered these books Douglas Stewart Preacher's Commentary, mm -hmm. Ian Duguid, the NIV Application Commentary on Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. And then these, two volume sets, Leslie Allen in the Word Biblical Commentary, that's a modern standard series, mostly by evangelicals. Leslie Allen's two volumes on Ezekiel and this is the one that's generally rated number one on Ezekiel nowadays, at least among conservatives. Daniel 
Daniel Block. Block. Block, sorry. Yeah. Daniel Block. Mm -hmm. About, uh, well, 1,600 pages maybe, two volumes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they helped a lot. But then I realized after I'd already purchased them, <laughs> you can actually access these, uh, not necessarily in downloadable PDF versions, but you can get them in sample. Mm -hmm. You can go to Internet Archive and oftentimes borrow for an hour or two these books and, and cut and paste to your heart's content if you can figure out how to do that. didn't take me too long because <laughs> I have some experience in cutting and pasting. So that's some of these, but you won't get all, all of these books this way and some of you don't care because you want yeah. to get the books anyway. But this is an expensive hobby. These, and the, these, I think the advantage, these six books would cost you about uh, $200 American, I think. Yeah, yeah. The advantage now, I mean, I still like reading from books, but as I get blinder, it's it's nice doing it online in that you can ex extend, you can make the print as big as you want it. Oh, great advantage it, for right? me. So for us, that's an advantage. But for expense, I mean, people have families and and our students and you know they they're gonna want to to buy what they want to keep forever but it's it can be very expensive but yeah. you've got to know where to get the best so mm -hmm. when you're writing a course as I was doing that I was going to actually teach in a, in a classroom setting mm -hmm. I needed to have lots of sources and credible sources most of us don't need to do that but yeah. we should know how to find the top two or three books in any area so you should tell them which sources that you have have uh, subscribed to or, or that you use now. Well, one advantage is we've got the this video we're going to attach at the end, which is best books, right? Yeah, but and I mean, it, you're it's going to show you where where to go to get advice on books. Number one, the ones yeah. I tend to use myself are Internet Archive, where you can find books like like uh, Bloch's commentary on Ezekiel mm -hmm. and get it for an hour or so and just look up the passage you yeah. you want to research. And Scrib D? <clears throat> Scrib D. Now you can subscribe to Scrib D and Everan together. You get a joint membership for those sources. Yeah. And you can find tons of stuff on it. Mostly yeah. modern stuff, but some older so devotional classics. And what is it, like 12 or $13 a month to yep. Canadian? Like that's, that's what we're... So yeah. it is a perfect complement to Internet Archive, and the Internet Archive has all the public domain stuff you can download, yeah. but it has other stuff you can sample for an hour or so, Yeah. the newer stuff. So just to be more up to date with, with things that they've found out through yeah. archaeology and you know, manuscripts being discovered and... I'm not uh, putting in a plug for Everend. Yeah. I'm not getting paid by them. I'm paying them. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's one I've discovered, and Scrib D is attached to it. I didn't know that at first, yeah. so you can get their sources as well. There's others, though. Yeah. Clubs you can join online where you can get, for about $12 a month, mm -hmm. access to a lot of the best new stuff. Yeah. So there's no excuse for us anymore yeah. not so to do, know. So do a little scouring around and ask people. You know, like we've we've got friends that are... Our, our teachers, so we sometimes ask them what they use, and they've, you know, put us onto some things that they had to buy, but you can get at a fair price. And yeah, yeah, we've got a few uh, sources that we've managed to uh, cozy up to over the years who are mm -hmm. seminary professors, so they will give us personal advice when it comes to best book choices. Yeah. So find yourself a, a few Old Testament and New Testament scholars <laughs> and, and, and uh, get befriend close to them. Befriend them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or, or, or be better, read these, uh, uh, watch this video, first of all, Best yeah. Books, because here you've got yeah. so it's, some it's, fantastic sources. Yeah, it's actually the, the video we did before this one, but because it's been so long, we thought we'll put you back to that one. Yeah. And then two other things will we'll put up. Uh, What's the second one? This, the second video is Christ Gave Teachers, mm. Luke and the Church's Rich Resources. Mm -hmm. With a description with which we will copy into the description Yeah. about the, the need to have the older resources too. It's a mm -hmm. point that is well worth making frequently nowadays in this day of specialization. Yeah. Get some good old sources. They, you'll find them not just informative but inspiring. 
your, the newer books yeah. tend to be dry, as you pointed out last time. Your question after the rich resources was contradictory or complementary. You know, we often hear people say, oh, well, they all have different opinions. No, it's, it's not opinions that we're talking about here. It's, it's uh, you know, it might be a different perspective or different information or That's uh, right. different emphasis. It's, it's not uh, what you think when it's you're It's not private opinions of, of Bible commentary, as, yeah. a, as if people write yeah. Bible commentaries for the fun of it yeah. or to express their own ego. No, these people have come to different conclusions, usually because they know that the Bible text yields different conclusions. Yeah. It's not dogmatic. And they have more nuance because they know language or background. They've done more study in those areas. Yeah. So yeah. we shouldn't take over from our watched our background this idea that, well, men, these are just men's opinions. No, these are the best informed men on the planet, sometimes women nowadays, by the way. Yeah. Many of the newer commentaries are written by women. Isn't mm. that interesting? So they're getting a higher education and they're getting a seminary education. And sometimes they're teaching in seminaries. And then the playlist, why J.W. Ork will fall and the church will stand. Yeah, that uh, particular video, the, the one on Luke and Acts, the mm -hmm. second video here we've linked is from that series, if I remember correctly. Mm, good. See you next time. Bye.